I'm going to show you how to run traffic light detection and color recognition using YOLO V8 in under 20 lines of code. So let's get into it. First head over to store.augmentedstartups.com and scroll all the way down until you see traffic light detection and color recognition using YOLO V8. Then you can click on get project. So once you're inside the project, you'll see two modules. This one is doing color recognition the old fashioned way, you know, with many lines of code. And in the second module, we do it with AS1. So for those of you who don't already know, the AS1 library is a way to future proof your computer vision development. So that means that this model will work for YOLO V8, V7, V6, V5, YOLO R, YOLO X and beyond. So what this means is that when YOLO V9 or V10 or V11 gets released, your code does not change. All you need to do is to change one line of code and that's it. You are sorted for life. Cool. So what you need to do is to click on this lesson over here, traffic light recognition code, and you can download this zip file right over here. Now, the reason why it's so large is because we also contain the environment, which has all of the dependencies and everything that you need. But I'll show you also how to do it without the environment. Cool. So I'm going to click over here to set it to download. Now, while we're waiting for it to download, you can open up a new tab and let's type in AS1 GitHub. Click on this first one over here. And this is where you can find out about the AS1 library. Now, in order to get started, you can watch this video over here. I'll have a link right up here for you to check it out. But essentially, this video will help you get AS1 installed. Otherwise, you can come to this GitHub repository and we have all of the instructions right over here. Whether you're on Linux, you can install it right over here. Or if you're on Windows 10 or 11, like I am, you can install AS1 via these commands. Great. So now that I have it downloaded, I put it in its own folder, which is in documents, dev, traffic, light, color, recognition. And I am going to unzip this. So now that we have it unzipped, let's go into the folder. And right here, we have everything that we need in order to run the app. For now, I'm just going to delete main.py because we're going to create our own main.py. And I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. So this is our environment, which contains all of our dependencies that we need. You can see that it's quite large. Uh, if we go into properties, you'll see that it's around, say, five gigabytes, which is a lot. Now, if you installed AS1, if you uninstall it from scratch, you can just delete this environment and run through everything, and create your own environment. But if you want to use this environment, I'll show you how to do that. And this will save you a lot of time. I'm going to go over here and type in CMD for command prompt. Cool. So now we have our command prompt open. We can go over here, copy this, copy that, go back into terminal and let's activate our environment. Cool. So that has been done. Now we don't need to run through all of this installation. So if something doesn't work first hand, then you, you should run through all of these instructions. Otherwise you can follow this readme and it will tell you how to run everything. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up PyCharm and then we're going to find where we downloaded our traffic light project. So I, I have it over here. Let's click OK to open it up. Let's open it up in this window. Right now we have our project set up. All we have to do now is to right click here and say new and we want a new Python file. So this will be our main Python file that we'll use and let's call it main.py. You can call it anything that you want. So now we've got main.py and now we can start coding. So the first thing that we need to do is to import arg parse. So this will allow us to add arguments so that we can customize our input as well as our output from the terminal. Next up, we want to import our AS1 library. So this AS1 library will allow us to do detection and tracking because we want to detect the traffic lights, right? So we're going to say from also traffic light extension we're going to import AS1. So this traffic light extension will have all of the libraries required for us to perform color recognition. Okay, so now we need to define the main function. So we're going to say def main and we're going to input our arguments. So we're going to say args. Now what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the AS1 object so that we can select our object detection and tracking algorithms as well as the weights and whether we want to use GPU or CPU. So the way we do that is we say dt for detect object equals as1. We're going to put in tracker equals as1 dot byte track. We're going to use byte track for object tracking 
and we can also set our detector to equal as1 dot yolo v8 n underscore by torch now what's really cool is that we can select any of the models that we have right over here so if i want to use yolo v6 onyx i can change that i can select yolo r yolo v5 yolo v4 almost any yolo version you can think of but we're going to keep it simple we're going to keep it to yolo v8 nano now if you go back to as1 you can scroll down over here to benchmarks and you can see all of the selected models that we support. So we've got Yolo V5, Yolo V6, all the way to Yolo V8. And we support these three trackers. We will have much more trackers in the future, like uh, Strong Sort, Fairmont, amongst many others. And all you have to do is to use these flags in your code. Now what we have to do is to include our weights. So weights will equal our args dot weights. And we're going to specify whether we want to use CUDA or not. So use CUDA equals args dot use underscore CUDA. So that's basically YOLO V8 in a nutshell. Simple, right? Next up, we're going to detect and track traffic lights using the input video. The way we're going to do that, we're going to say track underscore FN. And you're going to say that equals DT underscore object is the one we called earlier. And we're going to say track video. We're going to input our arguments, which is args dot video underscore path. So this is where we'll specify our input video. And then we're going to also say output underscore directory. So this is where we're going to output our saved video. And that is going to be in data results folder cool now we can specify our confidence threshold so thre equals 0 0.25 now you can play around with this confidence threshold as well as the iou threshold so it's iou trash equals 0 0.45 now I have a whole comic explaining confidence and IOU thresholds. So I'll have a link in the description down below. Okay, cool. So now we want to say also display. So we set this to false because we already have a display that we're going to pop up. So that's our display window. Just make sure that you put this as capital F. Otherwise, otherwise it won't register. We can specify whether we want to draw trails or not. So draw trails equals false we're going to specify which class we want now right so we're going to say filter underscore classes and that is going to equal to we're going to specify traffic lights traffic space light now just note that we are using the pre-trained coco dataset so traffic light is one of the classes in the coco dataset i'll show you in a future video how we will do this with custom weights and then finally, yeah, we're going to say class, class underscore names equals none. Cool. So that is most of the hard work, right? Now comes the fun part where we are going to be determining the color of each traffic light. And we're going to do that very simply by we're going to say dt underscore object. We're going to say dt underscore object or obj dot detect underscore color. And this will work not only for traffic lights. If you change this class to cars, it will detect the color of cars. Now, we're just going to input track underscore fn. And we're going to set this to true. And then input our args or our arguments. And we're going to save the result. Because once we save this video, we want to review the video later on. Great. Now, we want to print the frame numbers of the detected traffic lights. So, we can do that by saying... For b box underscore details, we're going to say frame underscore details in track function, and we're just going to simply say print. So now we add our first argument, which is going to be parser dot add argument. We're going to first specify our video part. So we're going to say dash dash video underscore path, right? 
we're going to set the default to equal to traffic. Don't forget our quotation marks. So we're going to say traffic underscore light one dot mp4. So this video you'll find right over here. It's in our main folder and it's called traffic underscore light one dot mp4. We can change it to the second video as well. Got that. And now we can just say help equals. We're just going to specify path to input video. Cool. So now we can copy this a few times. So one, two, three. Cool. This one, we're going to specify whether we're going to use the CPU or GPU. We're going to set our default to true. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, this will work. If you don't, then it will give an error or it will tell you to use the CPU. So because we specified that it's true, we're going to say action equals store underscore false. We're going to set our destination. So destination dist equals use underscore CUDA. And this will basically say that we can run CPU or GPU. Then we're going to put in no save if we don't want to save the video. Our dist or destination will equal save underscore result. Over here, we'll just say whether or not to save the result. So whether, whether or not to save the video. We could essentially cut this line out if we wanted to save another line of code. The AS1, every line counts. We want to make this as simple as possible for you to implement object detection and tracking. Then the last one that we're going to add here is minus W, or we can rather specify dash dash weights. Our default will be equal to none, and this will be path to train weights. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Lastly, we're going to say args equals so we can say parser dot parse args right we just leave that as it is and we specify main args and this is basically to call the main function so yeah that's it guys that's all of the code that you need for color recognition now i know i said under 20 lines of code you can get away with deleting some of these arguments and deleting some of the comments so let's check if it does get under 20 lines of code. So if we delete all of that, that, this one as well, this one. And look at that. We are at 20 lines of code. Just delete this one. Let's go closer. Delete that, that. We are doing everything under 16 lines of code, guys. This is incredible. That's what we call over delivery. But now the main question is, will it work, right? Let's test it out. So you can either run everything and install everything via... Now you can either run everything via PyCharm, but I'm already here in Terminal and my environment's already activated. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say python main.py and let's hope that it works. Press enter. Okay, so it gave us an error saying that parser at argument weights default equals none. So it says invalid syntax. So let's check where we went wrong. So it has a problem with this weights over here. I forgot a comma. Ah, silly me. Let's save that and try it again. Python main.py. Look at that. I think it's working. I think it's going to work. Let's try it. Yep. There we go. Ha! Huh, look at that. Guys, this is phenomenal because we have Yolo V8 plus a tracker running in under 16 lines of code. This is incredible, guys. So yeah, we're going to have a lot more projects that are AS1 based so that you can run all of these projects in under 20 lines of code or the most we'll go to is over 50 lines of code. Now imagine being able to measure the size of an object using YOLO v7, YOLO v8 or future versions of YOLO and also doing that in under 20 lines of code. So the whole goal of AS1 is to have modular design so we can swap out measuring an object with OCR so we can swap out measuring an object for OCR or we can even combine them together so we can say let's measure the object and uh, detect whether there's text on there and then it must return that text and if you want to measure the velocity of a car we can use a single line of code just to get the output from that. Isn't this amazing guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. 
please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to watch more AS1 videos and get your code working in less than 20 lines of code, then check this video right up here.